And it's so nice to welcome Stephen Krause onto the program here, Republican candidate for the nomination to the 9th Congressional District of Ohio. Good morning to you. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you. Have me. Yes. Yeah, of course. It's Thanks great. for coming yes, on. Yes, thank you. So you're running against folks um, in the Republican nomination, at least. You're running against somebody that, at the very least, has name recognition. Yes. Mm -hmm. There are a couple big names on the, in the Democratic primary mm -hmm. as well. Please take a moment, introduce yourself to our viewers here, uh, folks that you hope to be your constituents, and tell us a little bit about yourself and why you're running. Well, I'm Steve Krause, and I actually live in Huron, Ohio, which is in the heart of the district. So I can, you know, actually represent both municipalities very well. And um, I'm an auctioneer, realtor, licensed in the state of Ohio. I served 11 years in the uh, active duty Air Force and another seven years as a contractor to the Air Force. And I've held a variety of different things, variety of different jobs. I've uh, led praise and worship. We were talking earlier off camera. I'm a singer, and uh, I've done a lot of different things. Now, uh, what do you bring? To, what would you bring to Congress that your opponent, Sam Joe the Plumber Wurzelbacher, would not bring? Well, common sense and real solutions. I have real solutions for North Coast Ohio. I mean, I have concrete ideas on how to bring jobs back, because it's really about the economy. I mean, that's what everybody in America and in the North Coast and in the Ninth District, they want jobs. They want to put food on the family, I mean, food on the table. Mm -hmm. They want to send their kids to college. They want to be able to pay their bills. And it's jobs that we need. And I have real solutions to bring those jobs here to Ohio. It's substance over symbolism. and. You know, my major competitor right now, he's got name recognition, but he doesn't have any real solutions. And if you look at Marcy and Dennis, they've got 70 plus years of political experience. And you can see the results in Toledo and Cleveland. And do you really think the answers are going to come from either one of them? Well, I want to bring this conversation to jobs, as you mentioned here, and you say mm -hmm. you have some specific proposals. Mm -hmm. I, I'd like to hear a couple of them, if you don't mind sharing what exactly would uh, you be able to do in Congress, as opposed to at the local level, as opposed to at the state level? What can you do in Congress to bring jobs back home? Well, it's simple. Government is out of control, and they're regulating us to death. And they're also they're taxing us to death. But in particular, the EPA, the Environmental Protection Agency, is some bureaucracy up in Washington, D.C., that is passing laws about Ohioans using our own natural resources. Case in point is uh, Lake Erie. We got three trillion cubic feet of natural gas out there that Canada has safely harvested now for over 60 years. Well, I think we should be able to harvest some of it too. And we could even use it for our cars. You know, you can convert your vehicles to run on compressed natural gas. Even if the government taxed it at 100%, it'd still only be $1.60, $1.80 a gallon. What would that do for your pocketbook? That would kind of help out, wouldn't it? It would help everybody out. The other thing is, is um, energy, energy independence. We have an abundancy of energy. And the fact that our government will not let us, on a federal level, go after our own natural resources, like the natural gas, like oil. And also, there's another technology. Now, this is not new technology, but this is future technology that's called lifter reactors. And the actual name, and I don't expect you to remember it, remember it, it won't be a test, it's called liquid fluoride thorium reactors. Now this was developed right after World War II, and it competed with the fast breeder reactors, which is what Davis Bessey is today. And it was shelved in 1973 by then President Nixon in favor of fast breeder reactors. But let me ask you a question. If I could lower your energy bill by about a hundred fold, would you be interested? I think everybody would be, but everybody. the devil again is yes, in the details, that's right. as well, any voter would well, say. Yeah. Let me get there. It's easy to agree to that's that question. Right. <laughs> and if we could take the spent fuel rods from David Spessy and instead of bury them out in the Yucca Mountains, in the ground, mm -hmm. if I could show you a way to burn those up safely so that we could, you know, make more energy out of them, wouldn't you think that'd be a good idea? Is there a, a more specific reason as to why that isn't already being done? Such an obvious answer one would think would have already been in practice, no? Well, guess who's working at breakneck speed to build a thorium reactor right now? China! Hmm. And guess who else? India! 
and they're running with our technology and Bill Gates is supporting it. And the reason we're not doing it here is because the Nuclear Regulatory Commission can't issue licenses. So at a federal level, I would unshackle the government and let because there's a lot of private money that wants to do this right now. And they want to invest money, but they can't get a license. Now here's the key. These things are low pressure. I mean, they're, they're, they're not high pressure like the Davis-Bessey reactor, so they can build, be built modular in design. Now, modular building means assembly line. Do you think we know a little bit about assembly line work here in North Coast Ohio? And that could bring some real jobs right back here in Ohio right now. Well, Glenn Research Facility, the NASA re Research Facility over in uh, uh, Hopkins Airport, and the Plum Brook NASA facility there in Sandusky are key. We could start developing the government partnership with private industry. We could start developing this technology right now, and we could we could increase our energy output by tenfold, twentyfold, fiftyfold. This is purely energy of the future. Instead of the green, you know, the windmills and the solar panels and throwing all this money down the drain that isn't working anyways and is not really bringing any jobs. And of course, my, my competition, Marcy Captor, she's all for green energy. And we can, I think we can all think of, you know, Solyndra and some of the other examples and how that's failed us. There's real solutions, there's real opportunity here, and it's just a matter of getting government off the backs and let Americans do what they do best. The entrepreneur spirit. Let Americans do, let the, let the private industry decide what's the, what's the best vehicle, and let's move forward for all Americans. There's one point about Davis Bessie I, I, I want to bring us back to sure. a little bit. Uh, the, the idea of using the spent fuel rods to produce a different type of, to, to fuel mm -hmm. a different type of nuclear reactor mm -hmm. aside, right now there are cracks at Davis That's Bessie, right. and it has been the subject of investigation by the NRC mm -hmm. and the subject of concern mm -hmm. by most of the people who are sure. going to either be voting for you or your opponent. What, uh, what would you like to see done with Davis Bessie given the condition uh, it's said to be in right now? Well, you know, I just read a report, and I think it was either this morning or last night, that said those cracks have been there since the snow of 78. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, maybe it's a source of concern, but how much concern should we really be? If it's safe, if, our, uh, if the, uh, uh, the safety team that has gone in and looked it over says it's safe, then I'm going to believe them. But I think we need to move forward. I think the fast breeder technology is technology of the past. I think instead of burying these rods in the ground, I think that's a horrible idea. I mean, if you're all for the environment, you don't want to bury this nuclear waste in the ground. Thorium is abundant. There's so much thorium in the earth right now that we've buried barrels of it out west. But we can also use these nuclear rods, these ones that are spent, and we can use them up. I think we need to move forward. I'm a forward-thinking guy. I see the best days of America still ahead of us. I think that the, 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 the sun is not setting on America, but it's rising. And I believe in that Americans can do what Americans do best, that our dream is still alive inside of me, inside of you, in each and every other American. And I believe that our best days are going forward. Going forward here, uh we have to take a little bit of a look at the past and the debate over the past couple of sure. years. Uh, one of the hot button topics that surely, if you do go to Capitol Hill, would be greeted with is health care. Mm -hmm. By the time you take office, if you are elected, the Supreme Court would have already decided on the individual mandate, whether it's constitutional, and regardless of the outcome, there will, I'm sure, be discussion of that topic. What's your take on the reform as it passed, and where do you want to see it going from here on out? Excellent question, excellent question. First of all, I go to Washington, D.C. The first law that I want to introduce, the first thing I would like to pass, is that Congress can pass no law and exempt themselves from it. Case in point, universal health care. If it's such a great deal, if it's such a great idea, which, and we don't even know if it's constitutional yet, that's what the Supreme Court's going to decide, that's a separate subject, but Congress should not be allowed to exempt themselves from it or all of their crony friends, and that has got to stop. Just like insider trading, I mean, we sent Martha Stewart to jail for it. Why have they been allowed to do it on both sides of the aisles for years? That's just got to stop. You know, it's we the people, and our founding fathers looked at it as we the people. 
But somehow we've gotten off track and now it's the government first and the people second. I think we need to get back to putting the people first and the government second. Getting back to the heart of the question though, do you want to see this individual mandate stand or would you like to see health care from the federal level be dealt with in a different way? The, the issue of congressional exemption aside. Mm -hmm. I, think that, uh, um, I think that the whole thing is unconstitutional. I don't believe that the government has, the federal government has the authority to tell the American people what they have to buy like this. And I think that that's a state issue and that the states need to make that decision and not the federal government. So I would oppose universal health care. I would oppose the universal mandate. I don't think it's the fed role of the federal government to make that decision. Gotcha. Any closing thoughts you want to uh, share with the viewers and constituents that you hope uh, will vote for you this coming Tuesday? Oh, absolutely. absolutely. <laughs> um, Serve it up, knock it down. There we go. Hey, <laughs> you know. Um, when it's a web interview, you have you so go. much time, there so you please go. take the floor. I'll, I'll take a break it. here. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. <laughs> Go for it. No, just uh, r really quick. You know, freedom isn't free. It's not free. Each and every generation, we're only one generation away from losing it. And each and every generation has to fight for it, has to preserve it, has to defend it. Some pay the ultimate sacrifice and die for it. 67 years ago, elements of the 3rd, 4th, and 5th Marine Division in February of 1945 landed on Iwo Jima. A horrendous battle took place. Over 36 days and 6,800 Americans died, liberating that island, which eventually led to, you know, the defeat of Japan. 52 years ago, in 1959, Fidel Castro became president and dictator for life of a small Caribbean island called Cuba. And now that's a garden spot or cesspool of communism, socialism in uh, the Caribbean. 21 years ago, on February 23rd, 1991, I was ushered into a classified briefing and we were told that the ground war was going to start tomorrow and that the coalition forces had not gotten rid of all the Scud missiles. We couldn't take them all out and that the mobile Scud launchers that Saddam Hussein still had, he was going to unleash everything he had left. The next day, we suffered horrendous scud attacks. And um, I mean, the last one landed about 2,500 yard, 2, yards from my position. And you have a piece of it right there if you'd like to show it to the viewers. This is an actual piece of scud. And believe me, when this thing impacted, it got my attention. My point is that today, we have crony capitalism, we have career politicians on both sides of the aisle that are launching scuds at our Constitution, at our White House, at our faith, and our family, and our American dream. I've already been to the battlefield once before, and I'm willing to go again. What I'm asking the voters to do, what I'm asking each and every person of the 9th Congressional District to do is vote for Steve Kraus, Kraus for Congress, on March the 6th. Get me close to the scuds. See, I believe in the American people, and I believe our best days are still ahead of us. In 2008, the American populace, we were looking for a candidate to believe in. In 2012, I'm the candidate that believes in them, believes in the American people. I believe together we can restore faith, we can restore family, and we can restore the American dream. Kraus for Congress, 2012, March 6th, Vote for Steve Krause. Thank you, God bless you, and God bless America. Thank you so Thank much you for so being much. with us. Steve Krause, Republican candidate for Ohio's 9th Congressional District.